proudly brought to you by the MBA cohort. Conversations with Trendsetters. Alex Mitchell, so glad to have you today with us. Thank you so much for joining us to talk about Site Hustle. So welcome. Great, great to be here, Christina. Thank you so much for having me. It's a topic I'm super excited about, so I'm, I'm ready to share all the things I've learned. Awesome. Let's define it first. What is a side hustle? True story, I um, got into baking late in life last winter, like really got into baking, like for almost not professional level, but I was baking every night, if that tells you anything, like a new recipe. Yeah. It was just a passion of mine and I didn't do anything. Like there was no exchange of money for my baking. Um, I would just bring it to work and my coworkers really love me. Would a hobby qualify as a side hustle or? Yeah, so I get this question a lot and there's definitely like a little bit of gray area to this whole side hustle thing. So like the first part of it, right, it's on the side. So it's not your day-to-day -day job. It's not, you know, what you're doing from nine to five. That's the first important part. And then kind of the hustle part. So I think your hobby probably wouldn't be a side hustle unless you were selling what, what you made. And so, you know, I think the way I define it is either has to be kind of tied to some money today or some money you can earn in the future. So you could have a side hustle today that might not be, you know, making you any money, but maybe, you know, a few weeks from now or a month from now when it's ready, you know, to release to the world or, the, or to sell or, or something like that. Um, then, then it kind of qualifies as a side hustle. So either money today or money in the future and not your nine to five job is usually how I, I define it. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. <laughs> so, yeah. um, and what about you, your personal experience with side hustles? Uh, I have to tell you when, um, the question from one of our viewers came about side hustles, the first person that popped into my mind was you. Um, because you've written on the topic in the past, um, so I thought about you, but I know you're very busy. You're the, pro uh, the director of product at a technology startup, and I know things move quickly at a startup um, in developing a complex product. So how do you maintain? Do you have a side hustle right now? Yeah, so I'm a bit of a, a side hustle addict, maybe you could say. So I've, I've probably done too many in the past. So, you know, just thinking about a few of the ones I've done, I was one of the first like Lyft drivers in Washington, D.C. when Lyft was like a brand new thing, like this was five, six years ago. Um, I've been a real estate agent on the side because I wanted to learn about real estate. My wife and I wanted to buy a house. So I got licensed and did tours and open houses and all, all that kind of stuff for, for Redfin. Um, and then the most recent one that I have right now um, is what uh, kind of an organization of resources and courses and newsletters for product managers like myself called the Modern Product Manager. Um, so I sell those courses, I sell interview questions, I produce videos and YouTube content. Um, that's the one I, I've leaned into the most now. Um, and you bring up good points, especially if you work for a startup, it can be hard to find the time for a side hustle. And, and really the answer isn't anything you wouldn't expect. It's not a, a super sexy answer. It's a lot of nights and weekends. And really just instead of, you know, maybe sleeping in on the weekend, you get a couple hours in the morning. Um, I know ahead of, for example, ahead of this, this podcast we're doing right now in this session, um, I spent a couple hours kind of on new content and writing. Um, so it's those types of trade-offs that can kind of carve out, you know, five to 10 hours a week, maybe for that side hustle. Um, so it's going to take a little bit of your, your personal time away. Um, but the way I, I like to look at it is it's a great opportunity to learn something new. So, you know, with my Lyft example, I was learning about how a startup launches in a new city. It wasn't learning how to drive people around the city, right? That was not what I was in it for. Or the real estate, right? That helped my wife and I, you know, see a ton of houses and make a good decision on, on purchasing. And then, you know, obviously the one I'm doing right now with the modern product manager, lets me help and mentor other product managers or um, aspiring product managers out there, um, as well as share what I've learned. So each of them kind of has a goal. Um, and that's the one I'm doing right now. That's awesome. What a, what a great perspective to take about this. And it's to some end, and also it pays off dividends later on in life as well, I'm sure. Um, mm -hmm. So it's like a long term strategy. It's you have the immediate um, needs that it serves, but it also is a total investment for the future. 
for the long term. Definitely. Too. And it's, it's kind of one of those things too, as you get into these side hustles, you sometimes don't see all the benefits that they're going to give you. You're just kind of getting into it because it's interesting to you. You like to learn. Um, maybe you like to share what you've learned, like what I'm doing right now. And then as you get later in your career, as you said, you kind of see all these things start to connect and you're able to pull from all these different experiences you've had and tell great stories um, as you look for new jobs, things like that. And so, you know, it's, it's not always obvious, all of the benefits, but as you look backwards, you, you definitely see them. Yeah, awesome. All right, so if we were to look at people as binary, um, the, the people, there's two types of people as it relates to side hustles. The ones that have a side hustle and a full-time nine to five job, and the ones that only have the full-time job. What distinguishes the two types? in your mind. Yeah, so so one of the things I've I've written out about a lot is as I interview new candidates at least for for what I do for product management when someone has a side hustle it it really stands out and there's a few reasons but it's like a really strong signaling mechanism. Um, so you know number one it signals that they can really plan their time, right? That they can manage, you know, kind of carving out those extra 5 to 10 hours a week. Uh, but more importantly, it shows, like I've said before, that they're, they're interested in growing, right? They're interested in learning something new. You know, they have a passion that's outside of just their, their day-to-day world. Um, and they want to kind of cultivate and grow that passion and learn. Um, and, and what's important about those people who are in that second bucket who also have the side hustle is they bring back a ton of diverse experiences um, to that, you know, nine to five job, right? They, they work with different people, they're solving different problems. Um, and so I've seen a lot of those people I've worked with who have had that side hustle, bring back some of those great experiences in the form of new ideas that, that we can pursue, uh, just new perspectives, new, new people they've worked with. And so, you know, all of these things are, are really strong signals and really strong benefits of, of having that side hustle in addition to just your, your day-to-day job. All right. So I, if I were to summarize it, if we have all things being equal to candidates that look exactly the same, but one has a legit, you know, successful side hustle, would, you would pick that candidate. I, I would pick them, but I also, I write about this a little bit too. You've got to watch for a few danger signs. You've got to make sure they're not maybe, you know, in love with that side hustle more than the day-to-day job. Like, you know, you don't want to lose this person three months from now because, you know, their side hustle blew up. Um, you you want to make sure that they're still primarily interested in the job, that it is, you know, a true side hustle. So there's some danger signs to watch out for, but but usually that's a, a very small percent of people. Most, most of the time I'd pick the person with the side hustle. Gotcha. And that's a good point. I didn't even think about that perspective, but yeah, it could be a very, very serious side hustle. And then the balance might shift from the nine to five to to the side hustle, depending. All right. And, um, big trend question here. So we're going through COVID, um, people, millions of people are being furloughed and laid off. Um, Side hustles, how are they doing? How is that overall trend? What have you seen, you know, both in your own life anecdotally, or if you've seen any research, I don't know if there's research on side hustles, but what, what have you seen in terms of trending? Yeah, I think the popularity has, has massively increased. And so, yeah, unfortunately, you do have a lot of people who have, who have been laid off or furloughed um, looking to, to make some extra money um, and, you know, picking up, you know, different, different things that they can teach others or, you know, creating their, their own courses or content. So, for example, a couple sites that I've seen, you know, publish some stats throughout this pandemic um, are Teachable. Uh, which lets you create your own courses. Um, I've created a product course there, but they've, I think, doubled or tripled in size over the past couple months. Um, And then another one that's called Gumroad. Um, And Gumroad lets you sell digital products. So if you make like an ebook or, you know, you develop questions for interview preparation, some things like that, um, they've also doubled or tripled in size. So those are a few data points um, that I think kind of indicate you know, not only the people who are, you know, unemployed, kind of finding opportunities to, to make money and, and create these, you know, kind of businesses for themselves. But I think it's also showing people who do still have jobs, wow, the world isn't so safe anymore, right? I never would have expected a pandemic um, to, to risk my job. But I think it just kind of opens their eyes to even after this pandemic ends, 
you know, jobs aren't as, as secure as they were 10 or 20 years ago, right? You don't have a job for the, your entire career, right? You can expect probably to change jobs five, six, seven times um, in the average career now. And so kind of creating this side hustle that can sustain you through those periods where you may be unemployed or maybe changing jobs or maybe not satisfied with your job um, is, is becoming more important to people. And so I think, you know, we're, we're seeing an acceleration of all those trends that were already happening because of the pandemic. Um, but, you know, I think it is overall, it's, it's good for the side hustle trend. It's leading, you know, more of these types of sites like Gumroad and Teachable to emerge and, and help people kind of monetize uh, what they want to do on the side. Great. And that's a perfect segue into my last question, the crystal ball question. If you were to look at a crystal ball, what does the future, you know, five years from now, 10 years from now, what does it hold? Because, um, you know, yes, I think, you know, there's Upwork, there's Fiverr, there's all of these massive and, you know, and you just mentioned too that I never heard of before that are exploding. <laughs> And we see this massive shift, but on the other hand, what about California? What about Uber? What Uber is dealing with, with California? Mm -hmm. Can the other states follow suit? They typically don't, but they might. Um, so, you know, and they're being challenged. So what if you were to look at in, you know, nobody has a crystal ball, but if we were to believe that we had one, what do you predict for the next five, 10 years? Yeah, so as I look like five to 10 years into the future, um, especially as like Generation Z starts to consume like more of the, the workforce and millennials, you know, continue to you know, consume a ton of the workforce, right? These two generations are, are big content creators, especially Generation Z. They're, you know, creating content on YouTube, uh, TikTok, other places, right? And maybe they're not monetizing it today, but they're building audiences that eventually they, they will monetize in the future. And I think they have different perspective than past generations do about entrepreneurship and, and starting their own businesses and, and things like that. And so, you know, as I look in the future, I think, you know, it's, it's not inconceivable in five to 10 years that the majority of, of people who are working age will have a side hustle. Um, I know it's not the majority today. I think the numbers maybe put it around like five, 10 percent ish, um, depending exactly how you qualify side hustle. But I don't think it's crazy in 10 years to, to see that near half of, of people um, for all of the reasons I've mentioned for just how much changes in the world and how people need to kind of be in more control of their destiny. Um, it's an interesting point you bring up with what's what's happened with Uber and just independent contractors and, and things like that working for, um, you know, kind of gig economy uh, companies. And that's just one other thing I think maybe needs to change is today. You know, as you just mentioned, there's all of these different resources out there that aren't very easy to find. You know, you didn't know these two I just mentioned uh, that are growing quickly. I'm sure you could name a few I haven't heard of. It seems like there needs to be a better kind of collection of, of all of these kind of uh, gig economy or side hustle opportunities um, that then I can maybe see in one place that I can apply to or start in one place that I can manage in one place, get paid in one place instead of jumping all over the place. So I think that's one thing that will also change in the future is there'll be a little bit of consolidation of all of these things because it's, it's too much to keep up with. If someone works for Instacart and then writes a blog and then, you know, sells uh, courses on Teachable and it's, you know, I know for myself, it's already been too much to manage and I can only imagine, you know, other people will have the same problem for sure. So consolidation, growth of side hustles um, is, is what I see when I look into my crystal wall. Awesome. Love it. I love the insight. It's like big picture thinking, consolidation, boom. That's, you know, whoever's watching or listening, get on that because that's where things are going. Um, Alex, I really enjoyed our chat. Thank you so much. This was fantastic. Um, thanks for joining us. Yeah. Thanks, Christina. I really enjoyed it too.